Welcome back friends. Today I wanted to bring you along with me as I go to some thrift stores. I feel like it's been so long since I've been able to go out to some of my favorite local places and just browse around and have a fun thrifting day. So I wanted to do that since I had a little bit of time today and I wanted to bring you all along. I'm really on the hunt for some kitchen items like some bowls. I would really love to find some glass bowls with lids so we will see what we can find. And once I get back from thrifting we're also going to spend a little bit of time in the kitchen together today. You all have I've been loving seeing that in my videos and it makes me so happy and excited to share more of it and to know that you all want to see it so we are going to make some homemade blackberry jam and blackberry cobbler today we actually went blackberry picking the night before on the farm that I grew up on and that was super special to me my parents built their first home on this property it was 27 acres and it's the house that I grew up in my whole childhood was spent at this house with all of my horses and animals and uh, it's where I grew up so it was super special to get to go back there I grew up my whole life picking these blackberries so it was amazing that I was able to go back and um, pick from these bushes again and get to enjoy them so we're gonna do all of that when I get back and I'm gonna bring you along and I'm also gonna share with you our new chicken coop that we got for our chickens so I hope you enjoy this video and let's head on to the thrift store So we are now at Barron River Consignment and one of the first things that I saw that grabbed my attention was this adorable little cherry pie plate. This was in perfect condition. A lot of times when you see these vintage pie plates, they'll have chips and pieces broken off and that one was in perfect condition. It was only $5.99 and it was just adorable. And then the next thing that I loved are these beautiful blue willow plates at saucers and bowls. It was $40 for the whole set of them. And I think that was an amazing deal. And then these dishes right here, these vintage ironstone ones, I see all the time at thrift stores and I just love the pattern of them. I feel like it is just one of the most timeless and old fashioned looking prints. And I love, love, love these dishes. Um, these were $149.99 for the set of these Johnson Brother dishes and I could kick myself because one time I found a set of like four plates of those for $10 and I didn't get them. That was such a good deal but at the time I didn't know exactly what that pattern was so that's why I passed on them. Um, and now I kind of regret it knowing that they're worth so much and they're so beautiful. I also really loved these copper tins right here and I love seeing how people display those on like a wall in the kitchen so pretty and then this little English ironstone gravy boat was $24.99 I love the blue on that so pretty and this is a piece that I might have to go back for if it's still there normally when I go back for stuff here it's usually still there so I'm like hoping this is gonna be there it is the biggest most beautiful ironstone pitcher I think I've ever seen. It had beautiful crazing on it, but it was $24.99 and I didn't absolutely need it. And I have been really trying to be a lot more selective, especially this summer, and kind of not bring as much in. I don't think I've thrifted hardly any this summer and brought a ton in, which feels really good because I'm kind of saving for fall because I know I'm really going to want to go all out and do tons of thrifting once fall time comes. And we've been so busy this summer that I just haven't been out much. So it's worked out good and I've been kind of more selective. So I did decide to leave that on this day. I wanted to share with you all my one and only thrift find from today. I got this beautiful crate from the thrift store that I went to and I love this. I have so many ideas for this. I love old crates and I'm always on the hunt for them. And when I see them at a good price, I love to pick them up and they're perfect right now too for garden season because I can just picture this full of squash or cucumbers. It would be a great thing to store all the veggies in. Um, when we first picked them and while 
uh, we have them like sitting on our back porch or even inside it just be would be a great little um, crate to hold all the veggies in um, and then I also can picture pumpkins in this um, for fall and then how perfect would a Christmas tree look in this during Christmas and I just have so many ideas I could even see this in a little corner like maybe by my chair filled with books because I love to display old books so I just have a lot of different ideas for this and I cannot wait to add it to our home um, and figure out the perfect place to put it I'm sure it'll end up in all kinds of different spots and I will always rotate it to different areas and use it for a ton of different things so I knew it was gonna be gonna be a piece that was gonna be very versatile and I would get a lot of use out of so it was $14.99 and that is a super good price for an old vintage crate they had a ton of different ones too and they were all priced really well I think I might even get another one eventually this is just kind of an idea that I had I could stack two of them up and use them as like a little table beside my chair I didn't think about this until I got home but it would be so cute to flip them upside down stack them and use them as like a little table so just lots of ideas for this and I wanted to share it with y'all so now let's get started on this blackberry jam and cobbler. I'm super excited to share this with you all. I have never made blackberry jam before, so this is a first time for me. My mom made it a lot during my childhood because, like I said, we were on this farm with all of these um, wild blackberries. So I've ate it my whole life, but I've never actually made it and canned it myself. So this was a new experience and I will leave the recipe that I used linked down below. I'm not going to do a how to because this was just a trial experiment and I feel like there are so many recipes out there and you kind of just have to do it to your liking depending on how sweet that you want it or how tart that you want it. And there are so many amazing step-by-step -step tutorials out there on YouTube that are so helpful and informative. Um, if you are new to this and wanting to make some, you can even make this and freeze it. It's called freezer jam. I know a lot of people who make that and um, that way you don't have to actually can it. You could also just make this if you wanted to do a small jar of it and keep it in your fridge and eat from it for you know the next few weeks until it's all gone and it will stay good in your fridge and last for quite some time so that's something you could do as well but if you are new to canning i highly recommend taking a course there are a ton of really helpful online courses that can help you get you started if you don't have somebody that can teach you in your life who is really um experienced with canning and i actually took a course when I was 16 at um, our local 4-H office and I remember we made home canned salsa. I also took a few sewing classes there. I'm really thankful my mom got us involved in stuff like that growing up. I think these skills are so so important to know and to learn and there were people of all ages there, kids of all ages. I remember it being really fun and my mom's best friend's daughter was actually my best friend growing up so we both went and did that together and then my little sister came and so it was a really good experience and I know there are tons of places out there in your community that offer classes like that um, so definitely check that out if you're interested I would also recommend purchasing a ball canning book or going to the ball canning website to read the basic fundamentals of canning and making sure that you understand the basic knowledge of canning like for example why you need to remove the pills of some items before you can make them safe to can um, and why you need to remove the core out of tomatoes there's just all kinds of um, basic instructions and do's and don'ts that kind of helps you understand the process and exactly what you're doing when you pressure can something and how you are killing all the bacteria and making it safe to be shelf stable and all of that it's really um i think important to know that knowledge if you're going to get into canning and kind of like the whole process and that way like i said you can make sure you're following the correct canning practices to ensure safe at home canning okay now we're going to cut in the butter and some homemade vanilla extract into this flour mixture and crumble it up and sprinkle it over top of our blackberries Stay away. 
So for this cobbler, I'm attempting a gluten-free crust. I'd never made a gluten-free one before, but it is really simple and I just used one-to-one gluten-free flour for this. So you can follow the exact same recipe with regular all-purpose flour. Um, and I will say it is definitely not as good as regular cobbler, but for a gluten-free option that didn't hurt my stomach, it was definitely really, really good. But I'm just really, really thankful that we were able to go and pick these blackberries, um, and we're going to be going back to actually pick some more soon. I would really love to make a few more batches of this to give away as Christmas gifts. I know that is something that everyone in my family would absolutely love, and I thought that would be fun. And it was so special getting to go back to that property again. If you've ever moved away or your parents have moved away from your childhood home, um, it is definitely very, very emotional. We moved away from there when I was just about to turn 17 and this past week was my first time going back there since. So here's the final result of the cobbler and the jam and now we are going to head outside and I'm going to share with you how we are putting together our new chicken coop. Now I want to share with you all our new chicken coop that we received. I'm so thankful that we were gifted this chicken coop and I'm going to be sharing with you how we put it together and a review of it. If you are familiar with my channel, then you know that we do have eight new little baby chicks. We lost our full grown chickens a couple months ago and just recently got more baby chicks. So when the company reached out and asked if we wanted to try it out and review it, I was so excited. So we got it all unboxed and we laid out all the pieces so that we could make sure that we had every single part laid out and that it was all there. And as you can see, we have the best little helper here, but every piece was labeled with a letter, including like the screws and all of the hardware and we went over the instructions and all of it was there so that was exciting and then it was time to get started with building the coop and it looks super complicated when you see everything laid out here in front of you it looks like so many pieces and like it'll be hard but the instructions were really easy to read and um it only took us literally less than an hour to put together i was picturing this taking like all day to put together and it being such a long process but it was very simple it really helps that everything is labeled and that there are pictures to show you exactly what it should look like so my sweet husband here is helping me put this together while i film it i knew that it would be hard to try to put it together and film it at the same time so i waited until he was off for us to put it together and it was a really fun project we enjoy doing stuff like this and so it was just fun getting to assemble our new little chicken coop. I think this is the perfect little coop if you're looking for a good small backyard chicken coop. It is super adorable and I feel like it's really spacious as well. I love that the top part they can go in at night and it can be completely shut and secure for whenever they're roosting overnight. Our chickens, we let them free range during the day and then they will um, go home and get closed up in the coop every night. So for this one, we will only keep about four in it at a time. And then we have two other chicken coops that we'll keep um, the other ones in. I absolutely love that it is on wheels. I know some people will move their coop every few days around in the yard if they don't want to kill one um, specific spot in the grass. They'll just continue to move it. So if you're looking to do something like that, this would be perfect. And it has a handle on the back so you can easily lift it up and wheel it. Um, and it's just the perfect little size. I love all of the doors as well because there's not only one access point you can get to it um, from the bottom, from the top of the coop, from the back here to get the eggs. There's also um, a door on the end here where the run is. We also really loved how sturdy and weatherproof this roof is. We have bought a chicken coop really similar to this in the past and the roof was just wooden and I feel like this is a very nice weatherproof roof and I'm excited that this coop has that nice feature. It also has the little vent hole at the top so when they're in the coop they can get good air circulation and I'm just going to start filling up the little nesting boxes with some hay 
and so it'll be all ready to go for the chickens they also have a wide variety of other pet houses to choose from on their website they have rabbit hutches multiple different chicken coops they have one that will hold up to 10 chickens it's a really large nice coop if you are wanting something that's just easy to put together and you're not really wanting to um, take the time and the work to build something um, completely from scratch one day that is something we would love to do when we are on a property where we can build something more permanent that is going to be there for a very long time but for now this is absolutely perfect for our space back here now we are going to take an extra precaution and reinforce this small wire at the bottom because i was watching a ton of other youtube reviews on this coop and i did hear a couple people say that their wire had started to stretch a little bit and they didn't know if it was going to be 100 percent predator proof so we do not want to take any chances at it not being secure with how many predators we have out here on the farm so we're going to go around on the inside and double secure it with some more sturdy wire are you ready to try out your new home what do you think about it that's your new nesting box do you love it Oh, you gotta go get your sisters. <laughs> Can y'all believe how much they have already grown? It blows my mind how fast they grow, but their reactions to this coop were cracking me up. They kept running up and down this ladder and flying to the top, flying to the bottom, and just so curious and checking it all out. It was so cute, but they are loving their new home. And like I said, I highly recommend this. If you are looking for a very nice and sturdy, beautiful small chicken coop for your backyard, I know my girls are gonna love this little home for years to come. Okay friends, it's the next morning and I wanted to share with you all how many jars of jam that we ended up with. They all sealed beautifully and I just took the rings off and wiped them down because I like to store them without the rings and they are all good to go. I'm so excited. It made um, six jelly jars and then one pint and then one half pint that wasn't enough to can so I just put that in the fridge and we actually enjoyed that last night on some homemade biscuits for supper and I made some fried potatoes with some of our homegrown potatoes and it was just one of the best, we both kept saying one of the best meals that we had had in so long. Um, and it was just so delicious. Blackberry jam is my absolute favorite out of all the jams and jellies definitely my all-time favorite. It just tastes like summer and it is incredible. Um, there's just nothing like wild fresh blackberries um so i'm about to load up the car right now and make a delivery to my parents and my in-laws with some of this jam and some of this blackberry cobbler from last night we were so full when we got done we almost didn't even have a piece because we had ate so much but we had to sample it so we did sample it and it is delicious so i'm going to share the rest of it with like i said my parents and in-laws and take them a little plate of it so i just wanted to share with you all how everything turned out i highly recommend this recipe by the way if you are looking for a gluten-free cobbler i've never made a gluten-free one before but i found a really good um alternative recipe and it was absolutely amazing so this is how everything turned out. I really hope that you enjoyed spending um, a day in the kitchen with me. I'm so happy I got to bring you all along for it. I love you all so much and I will see you in my very next video. Bye friends. Please let me know if you'd like to see more little vlogs like this in the future where we go thrifting or shopping together and then spend some time in the kitchen and outside together. And I will see you all in the next one.